Is this the only dog that howls and barks at the same time? Does this dog know as much gossip as Perez Hilton? Is this the hardest breed to housebreak? Why does this guy have a Napoleon complex? Did this dog start the whole designer dog craze? Is this breed the sweetest dog on the planet? Dogs 101 celebrates man's best friend. Today, we focus on designer breeds. You know, those dogs with funny names. The Puggle, the Golden Doodle, the Chowini, the Chorky, the Labradoodle, the Cavachon. They call them designer dogs. Designer dogs. They're all the rage and they're everywhere. You cannot walk down a street in New York City without seeing a Morky, a Shorky, a Puggle, a Golden Doodle, or a Labradoodle. There's Yorkie poos, Shih Tzu poos, lots of poo. I mean, you just add poo on the end and you've got it. Celebrities like Jessica Simpson, Miley Cyrus, and Ashley Judd are drawn to these cuties. Designer dogs were designed to blend the best of two dog breeds together. Designer dogs actually began with a specific purpose in mind, to create a dog that was low allergy that could also be a service dog. So by crossing Labradors and Poodles, you might get a Labradoodle that has low allergy qualities. By crossing two purebreds, some say you're introducing more genetic diversity. Health-wise, that's a good thing. When you cross two non-related breeds, that have different genetic backgrounds, you can get what we call heterosis or hybrid vigor, in which case the animals, uh, their size increases, their health increases, their liver size increases. But much care must be given to choose healthy parents. A mom and dad with defective genes means bad news for the offspring. We're not going to decrease the likelihood of having hip dysplasia just because it's two different breeds. Many of these diseases don't have one gene that causes it. That's where the complexity comes in. For centuries, humans have selected the traits we want in animals and bred them. A horse that could pull heavy loads, a dog that could swim. And that's how our purebred dog breeds were born. People created purebred dogs out of what started off as dogs that were essentially mutts. And what they did is through selective breeding chose those qualities in the dogs or those traits that they most liked and bred for those. Designer dogs are created the same way, at least in theory. In Australia in the 1980s, some breeders wanted a dog with the lovable nature of the Labrador Retriever and the smarts of a poodle. They mated the two breeds and the offspring were called Labradoodles. And a fad was born. Listen up. There's a trailblazer in your midst. The Labradoodle is really the designer dog that started it all. And the result is irresistible. They're actually pretty popular these days. You got a faithful friend. Labradoodle! Jennifer Aniston has one, Vice President Biden has one, and Tiger Woods has two. Labradoodles were created in Australia in the late 1980s by a retired veterinarian. He knew somebody who needed a guide dog who happened to be allergic to dogs. So he mixed a gentle and intelligent dog, a Labrador Retriever, with another intelligent and low shedding dog, a poodle, to create a service dog that would be... A good choice for someone that maybe does have allergies. <laughs> but they're not hypoallergenic. No dog is, in fact. Labradoodles are simply a better choice for allergy sufferers because they often secrete less dander than other breeds. Today, this designer dog is on the verge of becoming a breed of its own. Here's the reason why. When Labradoodles are bred with other Labradoodles, their litters can retain the main characteristics associated with this easy-to-love pooch. First, their heads tend to be broad and their eyebrows are usually well-defined. Their coats come in every color, but their hairstyle, well, that's still a bit of a mystery. Because of the Labradoodles cross, you never know what kind of coat you're gonna get. There are three basic coat types. There's hair, which is straighter, fleece, which is wavy, and wool, which is the curliest and the most allergy-friendly. 
It's this Labradoodle's curly coat that's allowed the Malady family to become first-time dog owners. Something they long thought was impossible because eight-year-old Carter suffers from asthma and allergies. When I have an asthma attack, it is very hard for me to breathe and I itch. I start sneezing. I feel like I will throw up, maybe. Every day, Carter uses a machine called a nebulizer to help him breathe especially during allergy season. But not once has he ever had a reaction to 10-month-old Fletcher. Carter is able to do all kinds of things with this dog, rolling around, laying on the ground. It's amazing. He can be directly in contact with his fur and not show any signs of asthma symptoms. You like that, don't you? Curly-coated Fletcher is a second-generation Labradoodle, meaning that he's a cross between a Labradoodle and a Poodle, which ensures even less shedding. Why? because poodles have hair, not fur. There is no shedding of this dog, so believe me, that is the most wonderful part of having a Labradoodle. Carter feels the same way. He has a canine playmate that can hang out with him almost everywhere. Right up. Are they ready? Yeah. During Carter's Little League practice, the 75-pound puppy gets right into the action. No one minds that Fletcher takes the field because he's the mascot. Though donning the uniform might take a little more training. Hey, no. Well, it might work like this. Stay, stay. Woo! Here we go. But the water is where this Labradoodle really lets his hair down. After all, both Labs and Poodles are water lovers, so it's no surprise that Fletcher is too. When he's tubing with the Malady boys, he's just another kid having fun. Hold on. Ugh. The invention of this Labradoodle has given him a stress-free buddy he can cuddle with as long as he likes. He's just fun to have around. I just love to relax with him. It's really nice. Who's the best doggy in the world? You are. Labradoodles are versatile in that they can live in small or large spaces. But if they're apartment dwellers, a daily walk around the block just isn't going to cut it. These guys need outlet, they need exercise, they need things to do. And they can have some inherited health problems. Hip dysplasia being the biggest, and also they can develop some genetic eye problems as well. But in the grooming department, this adorable pooch that hardly sheds is pretty low maintenance. Just a little brushing, a little bathing, and the dog's going to be happy. Intelligent and eager to please, Labradoodles are easy to train. Just make sure you start early. Good sit. It's a dog that has a lot of energy and needs a lot of help focusing that energy in the right direction. And whether or not you or a loved one has allergies, Labradoodles make a great addition to the family because they're docile and social. To sum up, Labradoodles can live in most environments as long as they get a lot of exercise. They can suffer from hip dysplasia and some genetic eye problems, but they're easy to groom, easy to train, and make excellent family pets. It's no wonder the Labradoodle is such a popular designer dog. Darling and devoted, these practically perfect pets get their biggest thrills just being with you. When Designer Dogs 101 continues, meet Perez Hilton's Golden Doodle. Move over, Lance Armstrong. This Chowini is a biking superstar. This Chorky came out of its shell to become a party animal. Meet the designer dog that howls and barks at the same time. Can this Cavachon read?